If you are struggling with a problem like retroactive jealousy, chances are you're struggling with unwanted intrusive thoughts. Thoughts that sometimes pop up out of nowhere relating to your partner's past experiences that really have the potential to disrupt your day and or night. I talk a lot on this channel about how to overcome retroactive jealousy, how to transcend and overcome unwanted intrusive thoughts. I've created all kinds of products uh, relating to this topic, relating to this question. You can find details in the description of this video. And in today's free, very short video, I want to share a technique for dealing with intrusive thoughts that you probably haven't thought of before and that I find particularly helpful in challenging moments. My name is Zachary Stockhill, and since 2013, I've been helping men and women from all over the world overcome retroactive jealousy and overcome obsessive jealousy in their relationships. If you'd like to work with me one-on-one -on -one, or you'd like more information about my work, please visit my website at retroactivejealousy.com. You could even reframe this video as a different way of dealing with any kind of negative thought, not just intrusive thoughts. Because we all have thoughts that aren't serving us sometimes. We all have thoughts about ourselves or maybe about situations or other people that aren't really getting us where we need or want to go. Perspectives we have on events, on life, on ourselves, on other people that need to be challenged. And the beauty of life, as I say endlessly on this channel, you're probably sick of it, but it is what it is. The beauty of life is that we always have the power to choose our perspectives. And thus, in any moment, we have the power to choose better perspectives. On that note, the subject of today's video, a simple way to reframe any unwanted, or intrusive thoughts. Let's take a classic retroactive jealousy example. So let's say I'm in a relationship and my partner once had some kind of casual sex. Scandalous, I know, but hey, you know, in the modern age, it's very common. So let's say your partner has once had some casual sex. On some level, you may be going around with the thought of, you know, my partner's promiscuous, she's promiscuous, or he's promiscuous, or he likes casual sex, or she likes casual sex. You get my drift. On some level, maybe you've attached meaning to that experience of casual sex. You've maybe thrown a label on your partner or you've used words to describe your partner that kind of sum up their attitude with regards to, in this case, casual sex. Now, a simple thought experiment. Ask yourself, could the opposite also be true? In other words, to come back to our example, what's the opposite of my partner likes casual sex? My partner doesn't like casual sex. Okay. Do I have any evidence in support of the opposite argument? Do I have any evidence to say that my partner actually doesn't like casual sex? To use an example, let's say they've spent most of their adult life in relationships. As I say endlessly, look for patterns over perfection if you want to gauge who someone is. So maybe you have way more evidence that they prefer you know, sex and intimacy in a committed relationship as opposed to casual sex. You're not denying the reality of what happened. You're not denying any aspect or element in terms of their past, but you're simply introducing a different perspective that is at least as true as the previous thought in your head and possibly even more true. Another example, let's say you have a fight with your partner and you catch them in a little white lie that really ticks you off. I'm not excusing lying by any means, but many people have had moments in life where they tell a little white lie when they shouldn't. So maybe you start going around and thinking about this for most of the day or maybe even most of your week. Telling yourself, my partner's a liar, I can't trust them. My partner's a liar, she lied, he lied, my partner's a liar. Pause, ask yourself, what is the opposite of that thought and could that also be true? So what's the opposite of being a liar? Being a truth teller, obviously. My partner's a truth teller. What evidence do I have that my partner tells the truth? And again, just a hypothetical example, but you might be able to look back on several months, several years, or maybe even several decades of many, 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 many incidents in which they told the truth. Again, you're not saying that they didn't tell the lie, and that's not to excuse their behavior. It's simply to kind of try to balance things out and realize that the opposite in this case is at least as true. In fact, in a court of law, you would say it's even more true. And again, this comes back to a philosophical argument that I, I often think about, especially in the context of retroactive jealousy, because I get a lot of clients and a lot of students in my online courses, a lot of coaching clients. And on some level, they're kind of trying to get a handle on who is this person I'm dating or who is my partner? Can they be trusted? How can I risk manage my relationship? How can I know if I should marry this person? How can I trust them? And as I said a moment ago, one of my mantras is look for patterns over perfection because perfection doesn't exist. If you go looking for perfection in anyone's past, you are not going to find it unless your name is, you know, God or Buddha or, <laughs> or whatever. Perfection does not exist, but 
If you get to know anyone over a long enough period of time, you will notice patterns. And the patterns in someone's behavior, both past and more recent, will tell you so much more about who they truly are, as opposed to one-off events or aberrations from their patterns in their past. So again, this can be a really useful little thought experiment when you're dealing with unwanted intrusive thoughts or maybe negative thoughts, or you find yourself throwing labels on people. Breathe, take a moment, pause, and ask yourself, what is the opposite of that thought? And do I have evidence in support of that? Could the opposite of this thought in my head also potentially be true? Thank you for listening. Thanks for watching this today. If you got anything out of this video, please take a minute to let me know by clicking the like button below. I'll also ask you to please leave a comment telling me what you think. And while you're at it, please be sure you are subscribed to my channel to be notified of new videos moving forward. Thanks again for watching and I'll talk to you soon.